Okay, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Eric Salisbury. I'm the battalion commander for the Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion. We are responsible for recruiting the active Army and Army Reserve for the state of Louisiana, Mississippi, and the western part of Tennessee. This is First to Strike, the podcast of the United States Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion. If you're considering serving in the United States Army and want to know more, this is the show for you. I'm Katherine O'Brien. This is Season 1, Episode 1, and on this show, we're going to meet some recruiters. Recruiters like the ones you might meet at your school or in your community. Let's get into it with Lieutenant Colonel Eric Salisbury, who oversees the Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion, and hear a little bit more about his own Army experience, plus the opportunity that the Army offers. We start with self-discipline. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, the biggest thing that you come out when you get a veteran is you get the discipline, you get the standards, you get the work ethic. Some of the things that we've been taught to do is in the military. When I joined the Army at 17 years old, I had no idea what to do. I wasn't ready to go to college. I probably would have failed out by going to college. And the Army forced this. I mean, I I had a very, you know, very good family upbringing, but it gave me a different mindset. It gave me a discipline. It gave me a little bit of work ethic to go out there and do better because when I did go to college, You know, I was able to continue to get my degree and continue to excel. And then the only limitation you got is yourself. And the Army makes you realize that you're limitless in in the service because you can continue to excel and, 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 and move out as long as you don't hinder yourself. Do you think it would have been harder for you to realize that about yourself had you not gone gone through military service? Oh, yes. I don't actually, if I had not joined the Army, I don't know what I would have done because I was not in a position... I've only been a soldier my entire life. I've never actually had a civilian job. And if I had to go back and look at where I was at in 17 years old and sit there and go, what would you go to do? I'd been like, I don't know. I would have gone probably into the police force or something like that just because of the structure, the discipline associated with it, uh, and then focus along that career path. But the military was, I went to my dad and said, I want to join the Army, and he said, let's go. So and it opened the door from there, and I've been, been a soldier since. I think that's something we maybe we don't always hear about is that there is that experience, the work experience side, but there is that personal development side as well. Oh yes, I mean it's it's definitely when you go to when you join the army, it's very humbling because you you know you may be the best athlete in high school, you may be the best at the other things, but when you join the army and you're now in a group of people that are all similar, that the same quality as you are, and you realize and you're like, oh wow, I'm. I'm still good, but I'm not great. So it's very humbling as well. And, in, and everybody in the military, majority of the military people that have earned rank, earned their rank. They've earned that title. They've earned that through, through, through progressing professionally, personally. You know, we don't just give away rank in the Army. It's not, it is earned. Unlike in the, sometimes in the civilian world, you know, some positions aren't earned. Where in the military, you have to earn the, those positions to be in that leadership position. And it may not be the, the guy with the most rank that's in charge. Sometimes it's the guy that's the right fit to be in charge. So, and, and they've, they've earned that right to lead. So now when you're working with the recruiting side of the Army, so you are overseeing all of the recruiters in our general area? Yes, I oversee the recruiters all throughout the state of Louisiana, Mississippi. So, and it's and a chance to interact with them. I've, in my military experience, have been usually on a military installation, and then actually coming out here and living in the community, being part of the community, has been the biggest change because there's no big camp post or station here that you can go back and see a bunch of military guys or gals walking around. Here it's us walking around the civilian population, going to high schools, going to those college, and trying to promote the Army and have people understand that the Army is bigger than the combat jobs. It's bigger than, you know, what people really think, and, and getting that mindset of hey what we offer that the army has to offer because you know we are the biggest service that there is out there the united states army is the largest service you know and and it's and it's important for people to understand what we have for them to go out and do not only on the educational side the the money side you know and so because it's not all about money at the end of the day it's about what can we put on your resume that nobody else can and that's the biggest thing is you know it's if it's if it's a leadership skill or if it's a technical skill, you know, anything that we can put out there, you know, three to six, if you do only a first term or if you do 20 years in the Army, that you got something on your resume that the Army put on that gave you that skill and that trait, you got paid to do it, and it's something that nobody else can give to you. Let's talk about that. You were talking about all the variety of jobs that people can have in the Army. Can you tell us a little bit what some of those are? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, people, when they see the Army, they think combat. I've always known there's different jobs throughout there, but when I started looking and peeling the back and seeing that we got physical therapy specialists, cardiovascular techs, practical nurses, 
x-ray techs, you know, the, the computer side, the cyber command side, uh, the horizontal and vertical engineers, you know, dental hygienist. You know, you'd be a dental hygienist in the Army. We pay you the same thing you go to college for four years before. The Army does the same thing, and you walk away with being a dental hygienist. So, and it's, and it's getting beyond that part of the engineers, uh, the combat support, the logistical side. So you take somebody that runs a, a supply room, a, uh, a supply specialist or supply warehouse specialist. This is, they're running the same thing that somebody would do for Amazon or UPS. They're doing the same exact thing, I said, but they're wearing a military uniform. So when they turn around and leave the military, they got that skill set on there. So when they put their resume in to go work it, any of those large distributions, they have learned, they have got that experience. And people don't realize how it translates into the civilian, uh, on the civilian resume of what we actually do. Just, we just wear a uniform and do it. Is the Army for everyone? No, it's not. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not because there's, people, there's some people out there that just, that the, the mindset you need to have, the, the, uh, the positive outlook on things, uh, to be in the service member. And you also have to understand it's not about you or in the Army, you're choosing to do something bigger than yourself. So you become 1% of the population that defends freedom, to protect, to prepare to fight our nation's war. And some people don't see it that way. You know, they, they, you know, they're not able to peel that back and realize that you know, I don't, I can't do anything other than for myself, which is unfortunate that there's people in our society, a lot that they're around the world. You know, that's just not in the United States. It's just, it, it's unfortunate, but you know, the Army's not for everybody. I wish everybody could join, but no, it's just not the way the way it's designed and built to be. A lot of people, they're, they're, there's some people when you first join, you're kind of nervous. You don't know what to expect. When you go to college, you know you're going to go to class. You know, you go in the civilian sector, you're going to go to work in the field. But when you join the Army, you don't really know what to expect uh, until you get in there. And once you get into that, the, you build that brotherhood, that camaraderie, that's that's untouchable. Then it's then you realize that you're part of something, like I said earlier, bigger than yourself, and you're part of a team that's really designed to you know to be a projected force. You know, if you notice, we don't fight wars on on the U.S. territory. We have gone out and fought wars and liberated and provided freedom for other countries when they needed it. You, you spoke today to your soldiers about the families, and that really the recruiters are building a relationship, not with the potential recruit, but with the families. Yes, and, it, and it's that, 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 that trust that we, are, that we are doing the right thing for their sons or daughters, that when they join the Army, it is we build that relationship not only with that potential future soldier, is that family is letting them know that the Army is going to take care of their son or daughter. And, and then they know that... So when they go to basic training, they graduate basic training, and those parents show up and they look out there and they see across that parade field that sense of pride and then they, the, the way their son or daughter is now carrying themselves, it's a different, it's a different mentality, it's a different mindset. And it's our job to, to make sure those parents understand that, that, that the Army is going to take care of their kids, you know, because, and, and it's one of the things we always reiterate with the non-commissioned officers inside our formation is, would you let this person, would you, if it was your kid, would you let this person put them in the Army? Would you put your kid in the Army? And, and they're like, well, yeah, I would. I would trust this person to do this because, and that's what we have to continue to do, is, is, is keep that trust not only with the parents but also with the community. We are the face, and we have to make sure that we keep that positive image of the United States Army with our communities. What is the most common question you get from the families? So not from not from the actual uh, potential soldier, but the from the families. Are they going to go to war? And, and, and it's unpredictable. We're in a world, we're in an unstable environment, you know, and we're in the, the world out there is unstable. You know, the one of the questions is, my son or daughter going to go to war? And we can't answer that question. We can't say yes or no, uh, because anybody can be deployed in any, in any given time. And that's what we, we train them to prepare them to fight our nation's war. That's what the Army does. So whether it's in the combat job, combat support, or combat service support role, and that's the biggest concern of our, that a lot of the parents have is, will my son or daughter go to war? And we have to make sure they understand if they do go, they'll be trained and ready to go. Tell me a little bit about the Future Soldier Program. This is, uh, I, I think this is very interesting, and it really is setting soldiers up for success. Yeah, so when, when, a, when an applicant becomes, when they finally enlist, they go to the Future Soldier Program, and we actually do that once a week, where they come in and do Future Soldier Training, where we get, you know, they, te- they learn rank, they do physical training. It's to get, kind of get over that anxiousness they could have that, 
about basic training, but well, they're still going to be nervous. But our just our job is just to make sure that is the makes them as comfortable as possible. So when they get on that plane or bus and they arrive at basic training, that they're not as nervous and they're set up for success as much as possible uh, to go out there. And, and and it's one of the things we talk with our future soldiers is, you know, it's it's okay to be nervous because you're going into an unknown environment. Right. And, but it's our job also to, to help them understand that and when they do show up at basic training, that those nerves are a little bit calmer than they could be. This, but that this is a whole, we've set up a whole system to help people get ready for this. Yeah, oh, yes. So and that's, and that's what the, the NCOs do in the recruiting centers. They, you know, we have the occupation physical assessment test now out there, which making sure that the military occupation, especially if they chose, is the right job, that they are physically capable of performing that job. You know, and then above that, you know, we also give them future soldier training modules so that when they do get there, you know, they are they are physically capable and they're a little bit mentally capable of performing what they got to do. That's great. What's one thing you wish you had known before you joined the Army? Oh, wow. Uh, that was so long ago. <laughs> um, it's not that long ago. <laughs> really, uh, not to limit myself, honestly, because back then, you know, when I joined, you know, I honestly did not realize that when I joined the Army in 1993 that I would turn around and be a lieutenant colonel 23 years later. And I did not know the limits that I was capable of until I actually got the basic training. And then and I started to go through that and then realized that the only limitation was myself. Uh, so once I got beyond that point, I was able to to move. And then when I got the RTC scholarship, got a chance to go to college and then work my way up from second lieutenant to lieutenant colonel and then get selected for battalion command. Never did I realize that 23 years ago that I'd be sitting in this position now in charge of a battalion of non-commissioned officers. How many people are in your command? 274. That's a good number. (laughs) Yes, and that's the act, you know, that's my, that's the active duty uh, reserves and the civilians. So that's the people that are, you know, and that are important to make sure that, you know, the 274 of them, you know, the majority of us work for the NCOs out there inside the communities to go out there and do what they got to do to, to find those qualified applicants to join the Army. Lieutenant Colonel Salisbury, thank you so much for talking with us. Yes, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to limit yourself. Now, we're going to hear from some other recruiters. You're going to hear a mix of personal experience and Army service information. We start with Sergeant Chris Reed, and he's explaining what a lot of people think about when they are considering the Army, and that's college. I know one of the biggest things now is is the is the college opportunities. I mean, they've always had college for the army, but now they're adding so much to it, for, especially for like reservists and the active duty. It's like no reason for you not to have education, you know. And then one thing I tell all the kids is that we push education in our future soldier program. We push it, push it, push it, push it. I said we're gonna push it from the day you sign up to the day you ship because it, it's it's free, and you know you're not gonna make it past a certain rank. If you don't get your education, so even so, Sergeant Major the Army wants us to have an education. So I think that's one of the biggest opportunities that that comes from you actually serving. So whether you do four or twenty, you have the opportunity to get your education. So. Four or twenty years. years. Yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Four or twenty years, you have the opportunity to get your education. So I think that's one of the biggest things. And then, and then it's, I've, I've talked to a lot of people who never left Mississippi, who've never been on an airplane, who's you know they as far as they've gone is Bourbon Street, you know. And I, I get emails and messages all the time, you know, I'm, I'm in this state or I'm in this country and I'm loving it. And like, sorry, I saw snow for the first time. So, you know, it, little stuff like that is, you know, it's just one of the opportunities that I like about it, too. So it gives you, it, it, to me, it, it gives you something to, uh, to be proud of yourself. I like guess it, it, it's a pride when you put that uniform on. You know, it's different from, you know, you wearing a pair of Jordans or anything like that. You put a, when you put the uniform on and it, it just feel up. Because, honestly, I tell you, everyone doesn't, doesn't join to be patriotic. It, it, it's not. You know, some people join because they need money. Some people join because they need school. But I guarantee you, once you join and you start your training and you get to your units and you're wearing a uniform every day and, you, you know, it makes you smile on the inside knowing that I'm a, I'm a part of something bigger than myself. And I love it. And I, and I think, that especially with a lot of my battle buddies back here, I think they like that too, is that knowing that, you know, I'm playing a huge role in American history, I guess. So. Uh, Sergeant Sherelle Mims, MIMS. When I was in New Orleans, uh, a lot of the people who went to high school with me, they pretty much went to school and they accrued all these student loans or they started school and then they had to drop out. But if I help you do three years in the Army, 
there you go, full education. That's something that you didn't have at first, or meet new people. It's a lot of different opportunities if you come in. When you talk to people, what are some of the top questions that people have? They'll, what kind of jobs we have, of course. Um, is it hard? Will I make them choose a job they don't want? <laughs> If, Are they going to make you you make them do something they don't want to do? Yes. That's one of the big things. Or they think that everything is combat. That's, that's the biggest questions we have. For instance, I'm human resources. My job is to just process paperwork. So if, if you're talking to somebody right now who's never, I don't kick in doors or go do any combat-related stuff. I chose my job. I wanted to process paperwork. I process paperwork. I mean, everybody, everybody can't do it. That's why it's a, a 1% that are willing to do it. But if you think you can, go talk to a recruiter, find out if you qualify, find out if, you're, if this is the thing for you, and explore your options. Was the Army a real opportunity for you? Uh, I'll tell you the truth, in high school I didn't want to join the Army. I got out of high school, started working, was getting laid off, and had, had a family, had to pay bills. So I thought, hey, this is the best way to go. I want to go to school. And I haven't been laid off in 19 and a half years. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's no layoffs? <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am, no layoffs. So when you talk to young people, uh, how do you describe the opportunity of being in the military? Um, basically just by telling my story and what the Army's done for me and my family. Uh, I mean, it's been awesome, great to my family. So kind of just telling them my story um, and getting where they're coming from and kind of blend it in with what how the Army could help them or how the Army Reserves could help them maybe go to school, you know, uh, discipline, things like that. <laughs> the perk example, my son's in the Army. He's been in six years, and that was probably the best thing he ever did because really smart kid but just didn't have any kind of direction or motivation. Now he's, he's totally turned around. He's married, has kids, going to college, like doing what he's supposed to do. So. Terry Joyner. I uh, grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, been in the U.S. Army for 21 years now. Everyone starts on this path different ways, but I think once you go through it, it becomes a part of you just to serve. If you look at any of these soldiers here, you'll know that they serve in their communities, they serve in their churches, they serve everywhere across, you know, even their families. They try to be a part of their communities that they're in. So I think that's just at the heart of what we do. You may come in for something else, adventure. Some people come in for college money, but guess what? That service part just kind of grabs you and just gives you a big hug. And then before you know it, you're doing it yourself. That's actually a really great point because some people might come in for one reason and what they get out of it is different. They kind of have go through this growth process of being in the military and they're really some of their motivations might change. It will. I do believe it will. It changed me. You know, changed me drastically. Just from where I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, would have never thought that I would travel the U.S., travel abroad, would have been able to meet such outstanding people, meeting you today, doing a podcast. I would have never thought I would do that just from where I came. And so this, this, this journey that you're on once you're in the military is just outstanding. Where you can go and who you can become, it just makes you a better person. When you're talking to somebody about serving, potentially serving in the military, how do you describe the opportunity of military service? When I describe the opportunity, I say, what do you want to become? That's the first question. What do you want to become? Some people want to become leaders. Some people want to become business owners. Some people want to, you know, just be able to keep a job consistently, right, and show up on time. The Army has all of that. What they're going to do is they're going to put you through leadership training. They're going to treat. They're going to tell you, I need you here every day at 5.30 in the morning. So you learn that, that how to, to show up for a job on time. You, you learn skills. They're going to train you. They're going to develop you. They're going to make you the very best person that you can be in every area of your life if you allow them to. And that's what I've learned from the United States Army. That was Sergeant Chris Reed, Sergeant Sherelle Mims, Sergeant First Class Elmer Fry, and Major Terry Joyner. Recruiters want to answer your questions. Of course, we hope you get some of your questions answered here on the show, but you can always speak to a recruiter directly. They want to hear about your situation and will help you decide if Army service is right for you. Just call 1-888-550-ARMY. That's 1-888-550-2769. Or visit GoArmy.com. Is there something you'd like to hear on this podcast? Let us know and maybe it will be part of a future episode. 
This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts through iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, or any place you can get podcasts. Next week, we're going to hear from some students, some students who are thinking about their futures. Hmm. You won't want to miss it. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week on First to Strike.